Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube! My name is C Raptor, it's time for more Scuttlebutt. This week's game to keep you company is a, a ranked sprint game in Tier 9 British cruiser HMS Drake. Drake is... I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not a tremendous fan of British Heavy's past Tier 8's album all. But with that said, Drake is pretty playable. Her armor scheme feels less vulnerable than Goliath, despite the fact that she has one less turret. And, and while her gun reload still kind of feels unnecessarily punitive, I mean, these are 234mm guns, so 7 and change inches, but they reload, in some cases, more than 50% slower than, than comparable... I'm sorry, 9 point, what, nine point something inches. But, like, compared to an 8-inch gun, they reload way slower, but you just don't get that much more hit out of them. Feels bad. Um, you still can get good work out of them. You just have to understand that your gun reload is kind of gimp. Um, her AA sweep is really good. She retains that crazy British cruiser heal that can heal them for like half their HP pool. Um, and, and one thing of note that caught me off guard in this match, she only has a single quad torpedo launcher per side, which of course is a single launcher per side is standard for British heavies, standard for some of the British lights, but it catches me off guard a little bit because at the high tier of the British light cruiser line, Neptune and Minotaur, you have a lot of torpedoes on each side. Drake only has four per side, and that I get into a little bit of trouble unexpectedly later. You, you'll see it when it comes up. This is a fun game. Anyway, enjoy, and uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about some news. Regular weekly shout out, of course, for the NA forum contest. I'll put the link down below. Go check that out. Go win you some free stuff. Um, Hapa and the NA community team have uh, been doing a really good job of keeping that going from home as they work out of their apartments or houses or home studies or wherever they happen to be doing their doing what they do, uh, keeping up with the forums and uh, and, and keeping the community uh, hooked up and, and all that sort of thing. So that's still going on. Go check that out. Go win you some free camos or whatever they're giving away this week. Uh, speaking of the NA community team, last time uh, we talked about how some of the job postings for those various community positions had kind of disappeared and that hopefully we'd hear some news online. Well, turns out we did. Uh, there are two new faces to the team. First is Medreco, the new Portuguese community manager. I'm really excited about this, right? We've we've been without one of these since CU left the NA team last summer, and uh, so welcome to him. Glad to have him aboard. Um, the, 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 the Latin American and, and kind of Portuguese, Spanish-speaking community uh, on the NA server has a special place in my heart because these guys... Uh, continually show up to support us when we run competitive events, and they've they've continued to to, 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 to come and play and have a good time. It's a, it, it can be rocky at times. The time differences have caught us uh, off guard on both ends of that equation sometimes, and we there's there's been some issues. I'm not going to lie, but in general, they're they're just they're such fun they're such fun people. They're they're fabulous, and I'm really glad that that they're they've got uh, a native spell. I'm not it's a native speaker, but certainly somebody fluent in the language. Let's say to kind of keep them plugged into what's going on from a community perspective. Uh, back on the NA server. Uh, in other news, they've also filled the, the slot previously occupied by Femininely, adding um, Mademoiselle Sale, not Mademoiselle, which is the French, you know, madame, madame, Mademoiselle, it's Mademoiselle to the team, S-A-I-L on the end. I thought that was a nice clever play on words. Um, so welcome to her, and uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting some of these guys at future events, such as uh, Anchors Away or something like that. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I know they're still looking for a Spanish-speaking community manager to add, so they've got the Spanish and the Portuguese side to reach out to the Latin American community. Um, but the really good news for us on the NA server is that our community team is nearly back to full strength for the first time in almost a year. If you go back and you look at it, CU left uh, almost a year ago in, like, I want to say June or July, and then Radar was gone in August, and then Kami was gone in October... And then, of course, Femme moving on earlier this year, I think in late February. So, like, the turnover now is almost complete, and we've almost got all these positions filled again. And so hopefully we'll be able to keep some of these guys around for a while. So good news on that. Good news on that front. Speaking of Anchors Away, unfortunately that news is not as rosy. We talked about this last scuttlebutt, and yeah, it's come to pass. June's stop aboard USS Intrepid in New York City has been postponed. It's not the... This is not shocking, right? I mean, it's unsurprising... But it is still, of course, it's still disappointing. Um, hopefully, they'll be able to hold July's date aboard USS Wisconsin and Norfolk, and that'll get the next tour started off. Um, well, it'll be a while before we, we, we hear any news one way or the other on that, I suspect. But, um, well, here's hoping. That's all I can really say there. It's, it's too early to call, 
But I, I, I had a really sneaking suspicion that June in New York was just not going to happen. And, and sure enough, it didn't. Um, on a personal note, I have managed to secure plane tickets uh, for my wife and I to head down to Sydney in January. So right now, I'm planning on attending the event aboard uh, Vampire 2 at the Australian National Maritime Museum in late January 2021. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that trip happens to... The, the timing of that event happens to mostly coincide with our 20th wedding anniversary. So it, feel, it felt like a good time to go back to Australia. Uh, we love going down there, my wife in particular. And uh, and so I was like, eh, what the hell, let's do it. Uh, I don't have return tickets booked just yet, so, yeah, you know, baby steps. But uh, So we're, we have a way to get there, and I'm still working on getting us back, but we'll figure all that out. We're probably going to hit uh, Sydney and Melbourne. And, of course, while we're in Sydney, we'll, we'll, go, to, we'll go do the Anchors Away stop and, and hang around. And Sydney's just a fabulous city. So, look, if you're, if you're stateside and you do decide you want to go to this event, man, make the time. Spend the time. Go see Sydney. Go see more of Australia. Hop a plane. Go across the Tasman Sea. Go see, go see New Zealand. Uh, it's a fabulous part of the world, and hopefully I'll see you at uh, at uh, HMAS, uh, HMAS Vampire 2. Of course, today is patch day. Update 9.4 drops today with the early access to the Russian cruiser split and submarine testing mode. I am excited for this to get here, right? I have been purposely avoiding all of this on PTR and the various test weekends and everything, and maybe that's bad of me, but I just, I didn't want to... Sp Spoil, it's not the word. I didn't want to poison the well, let's say. Um, it's I've, I've, I've tested games for a long time. Not PC games, but, but card games and board games. I've done a lot of playtesting for various companies over the years. And I've found that it's very easy when you test something early on to kind of get biased against it, right? And it's it's testing. It's going to change. You know it's going to change. You don't know what the final form is going to look like. But you get this, this in your back of your brain, you're like, ah, I don't like this. And I was really hoping to avoid that with submarines. Um, so I've been purposely, like, not playing it. But Thursday night stream, Thursday night stream, tomorrow the 14th of May, that's going to be the big reveal for me in submarine mode. And I'm pretty excited for this. The history and exploits of the Silent Service is what got me into naval history to begin with. And seeing them come to life in the game should be a ton of fun. So bring on the down periscope and Operation Petticoat, <laughs> Operation Petticoat quotes, uh, let's do this. I'm I'm looking forward to trying this out. Uh, it does seem, reading over the patch notes, that they've pushed back some of the new Russian cruiser ships uh, a patch later than we had inspe expected. So let's do a quick review of what you're going to get in 9.4. Uh, you're going to get early access to um, Tallinn and Riga. That's the Tier 8 and Tier 9 in the new Russian side branch. Okay, Tallinn, of course, is 1,280mm uh, um, barrels. Riga moves up to nine 220 millimeter barrels. Okay, the tier 10 in that branch, by the way, doesn't look like it'll get here until 9.6. If I'm reading these patch notes correct, I'm not sure. It's not available right now for early access, doesn't look like it's going to be available for a while. I, I can't really tell. It might be coming in 9.5. I'm not sure. I just know it, it looks like they've stretched this event out another patch than I was expecting. Um, you will also have access to uh, tier 5's McCoyan in this sh in this patch that'll be coming as a reward ship for the. The little token system they're adding. Um, and so those three ships are absolutely available in this patch. Now, the new Tier 10 uh, cruiser that is replacing Moskva in the tech tree, that's uh, Alexander Nevsky, is not available until 9.5. So if you're if you're grinding out a Donskoy or you're working on your fleet, you're playing your Donskoy to earn up XP, you've got four more weeks to work on that, no big deal, um, because Nevsky will not be gifted to anybody. You're going to have to earn that the old-fashioned way, right? You're going to have to earn the XP on Donskoy and then unlock the ship the, the normal in the normal fashion. Um, and then, of course, if you don't get early access to Tallinn, you'll need to be working on XP uh, in Tier 7 cruiser uh, Schurz, and that will allow you access to Tallinn when she comes to the tech tree Spotter in 9.5. It looks as if, if I'm reading all, the, all this correctly, uh, tier, the current Tier 5, uh, that's Kirov, and the current Tier 10, that's Moskva, will stay right where they are in the tech tree for at least four more weeks. I'm pretty sure that 9.5 is the official release of the line, and that's when Kirov and Moskva will move out and do their thing. I think Kirov becomes a premium, and Moskva becomes a special ship or something like that. Um, other big thing in this patch, of course, 9.4 arriving, is free, quote-unquote, free premium consumables. Everybody in the game will now all equip what everybody has thought thought of for five years as premium consumables, period. You just, everybody will have the same consumables with the improved reloads or the improved durations or whatever, and wow, this can't come fast enough. <laughs> How many times have you watched your teammates, you know, burn down because they didn't, they didn't pay for an improved damage control party? 
or they couldn't survive because they didn't have an improved repair party, and they the, the, the cooldown wasn't short enough, and they couldn't heal in time. Like, <sighs> all that's going away. Everybody will now be on a level playing field with this, and I'm glad for it. Um, this is this is long overdue. Fire. Anyway, I'll put the patch notes, link patch notes down below. Dev blogs, uh, some interesting announcements. Let's have a quick look over these. A couple of new German premiums announced, announcing Tier 9 Battleship Ludendorff and Tier 6 Carrier Eric Lohnhardt. Um, Ludendorff looks kind of like a baby grosser, grosser curve first a little bit, right? She's She's got four triple turrets, uh, except these are 15-inch guns, 380 millimeters, uh, just like Alsace. Alsace also brings um, uh, 15 of the, I'm sorry, 12 of these barrels to Tier 9. Um, except that, that, of course, uh, Ludendorff comes with the German Hydro, a boatload of guys secondaries, German secondaries, yes, 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 and then, of course, uh, torpedoes. That's nice to see. So maybe a bit... Maybe kind of like an up-gunned up, like a fat turpitz, maybe, is how you think of this ship. I'm not sure exactly, but it looks like an interesting concept. Um, Lohenhardt is hard to figure out because we haven't had a chance to try German carriers yet. She retains the AP rockets that that, that uh, uh, Vesser has over in the tech tree, a mechanic we still don't really know a lot about, um, while bringing HE bombs and faster torpedoes. So, okay, sure, we'll, we'll see how it goes, right? I'm curious to try these things. Um, the UI is getting some more tweaks and improvements in 9.5, starting next patch. Uh, coming, starting with how combat missions and directives are displayed. This is this is a big change. I'm I'm glad to see this. It should be easier to see progression as well as finding all this info and without you know clicking 18 times. Uh, there's a variety of new camo schemes coming for various currencies, including steel. Which I'm very curious. Uh, and a new collaboration with something called Hollow Live. I don't know what that's all about, but all right. Um, anyways, I'll put a link in there. You can go check that vlog out. You want to see a little bit more info about an upcoming patch that is also available. Uh, they've given us a look at some of the changes that are coming to the unique upgrade system in 9.5. This has long been, long has it been prophesied that the, up, the unique upgrade system would been changing, would be changing, and here it comes in 9.5. So we're looking about mid-June or so for these changes. Uh, I'm happy to report that some of my fears about this have been allayed a little bit. I was really t scared that they'd buff these to the point where they would feel mandatory, right? And players would be forced to to spend a research point, forced to do regrinds to be competitive at Tier 10. But so far, I'm not seeing anything that leaps out at me as, OMG, you have to have this upgrade for ship X or Y to be amazeballs and competitive. Um, some of them, some of these unique upgrades have actually been nerfed a little bit, which I find surprising. Uh, but I'm glad to see that they're willing to do that because it means that if they perceive, you know, down the road that these things need tweaking or balancing or whatever, they won't, they won't, they're not afraid to do that, right? That's good. I'm glad to see them willing to do that. Um, anyways, the, the list of the announced changes is available down below. I'll put a link down to that dev blog, but but so far I'm just kind of glad to see the overall direction that they're moving here. Uh, they offer options on how to play a ship, but I don't feel like they're universally required to be competitive in, a, in any of the given tier 10s. We haven't seen all of these changes yet, so there's a little qualifier here I'm going I'm to slap on at the end of this statement, but so far I feel okay with this. Uh, the big news, of course, that they've announced that caused a big stir and and Twitch chat to collectively melt down and lose their minds when it was announced is, of course, the return of the dockyard. Uh, this was made infamous, the big Puerto Rico event last Christmas. Um, but this time, Wargaming is trading the Hawaiian look of the dockyard for something more European as we head to Hamburg. Uh, this new dockyard event is also coming in 9.5 and will offer players the opportunity to earn two German premium ships, Tier 6 cruiser Graf Spee, which has been kind of off and on available since she was originally given out for free a couple of three or four Christmases ago. I forget when it was exactly. And of course, Tier 6 battleship Odin. Odin has been through a couple of testing iterations. She's a ship that's very polarizing in the CC community. You see some people that like her, some people that don't like her. The general feeling on this ship is that it's it doesn't have enough hit points for what it wants to be. Um, and it doesn't get favorable matchmaking, right? Because it sees a lot of tier 10s, and it comes it comes in with like 54, I think, 54,000 hit points. Some of the battleships you're going to face tier 10 have double your HP, right? And that feels awful. So, Odin is an, an oddity, let's say. Um, with that said, folks are probably going to want to try to go get the thing. She is kind of fun to play. Um... The, but they've, they've made, the, to, be, the, to me, the big news here is they've, they've taken some of the lessons learned from the last Dockyard event and have definitely applied them here. Uh, they've released the complete list of directives that is available in the blog post. So you can see absolutely whatever you have to do. And they've also made it very clear that you won't be able to earn Odin without investing a few doubloons. I think the number is 3,500, um, which, if memory serves, is about 10 or $15. That sounds about right. I'd have to go. Like, it's been a long time since I bought doubloons. I don't remember exactly. But the bottom line is, they're, they're being totally transparent up front. You'll have, you know exactly what's going to take to earn this ship. 
Uh, the directives themselves don't look nearly as grindy. Um, and you'll be able to earn significant chunks of progress for free just by logging in and playing the game. Uh, and then, of course, you'll ha you will be required to throw a few bucks at the ship at the end if you want it. But you will be able to earn Graf Spey basically for free. So it's a little bit of a return of the Christmas event that, that, that offered Graf Spey in that sense. But there's this other carrot at the end. Of course, it comes with all the, the cool visuals, the amazing visuals of the dockyard. I can't wait to see that. Um, Yeah, there you go. That kind of winds things down here. That's about all the news I can think of for the week. Um. In the meantime, guys, hope you enjoyed the game in Drake. This was a, a spectacular ending to this match. And um, anyways, guys, wash your hands, be safe out there, and I'll see you in game. Take care.